Hello, today I want to talk about the decline of iconic brands and their struggle for survival. The big iconic brands that at once seemed untouchable, now they are falling out of favor. They pride themselves on having this big moat about them to protect them, but this moat has been eroded little by little by new forces. An example of a company with a huge moat around it is Coca-Cola, which actually only sells sugarly drinks, sugar water, but their advertising budget is so huge that any company who wants to get into this business, they will have to spend millions and millions of dollars just to get a sliver of the market by that Coca-Cola already commands. But things are changing quickly. There are new marketing techniques that is changing the whole marketing atmosphere. There are little commerce who are taking market shares little by by little by, but there are so many new commerce in every industry that the big brands are just struggling to stay alive. So in which ways are the big brands losing their shine? Well, the thing is that the era of big glossy magazines and huge advertising budgets on TV is just becoming irrelevant. Now there are people like me who can just turn on a camera with a budget of zero because, you know, I am not getting paid or charging for this video at this moment. So newcomers, hundreds, thousands, billions of them are propping up their own brands, are propping up their own products, and they are just taking a little piece of that pie. And the new channels of communication are TikTok, YouTube Shorts, uh, Instagram Reels, all of these things that anybody can just pick up a camera and promote their own brand and their pro promote their own agenda. So how are big brands going to compete with that? They cannot, first of all, they cannot hire an army of little influencers because that would be a management headache. But also, these influencers, their marginal cost is almost zero. While if you advertise on TV or on, on glossy magazines, which is a dying media, you know, the, the, the expenses are humongous. So there is a bind here that these big brands, they don't know how to react to this newcomer competition. So here is an example of how single individuals competing against huge brands. For example, Rihanna, the singer, one person, she has over 300 million followers and she has a brand called Fenty Beauty and she is challenging well-established uh, competitors in the personal care and cosmetic industry. Another example is Kelly Jenner. She has over 5 million followers in the assembled social media and she has started Kelly Cosmetics. So that's another big challenge. And all she has to do is basically turn on her camera, talk about Kelly Cosmetics, and that's already a huge competitor. And another competitor is what uh, Kim Kardashian. She has about 400 million followers as well. And she has a brand called Schemes, also challenging big established companies. But guess what? Even these well-established um, influencers, they are competing against the millions of little influencers who only have a thousand followers, 2000 followers, 5000 followers. And these millions of little influencers, they have tons of energy and creativity and they have, they are just building their own audience. So everyone there's like a whole bunch of little piranhas trying to eat a little piece of a huge cow. So this is how the advertising company is shaping up and that's why big brands are losing their power. In addition to that, the whole transaction format is changing places. Before we used to go to the shopping mall and buy our whatever the brands that we were buying, let's say Nike, we used to go to a shopping center and buy our Nike. But guess what? Now people can buy their Nikes out of Amazon or newcomers, they just build a new website and 
you know, people are lazy. I am lazy. I rather just click a button and have a package being delivered to me than get it into my public transportation, go to the shopping mall, you know, just walk around for hours until I find the product that I like. No, I just go to the, my website. I see an advertisement that I like. Oh, I, I, I like this. I click buy and two days later, it's just at the front of my door. I save money on time and I save money on, on, on transportation. It's just a much more pleasant experience. Also, the medium of, uh, of, uh, of consumption, the way people consume media has changed. So, uh, I, I, I don't know, 20 years ago, people used to have these things called cable, but now people are consuming their media through uh, Netflix. So, uh, there used to be a time that if I wanted to watch a nice TV um, show, I would just sit down and watch my HBO, watch my cable, and there would be advertisement in, in, in between segments, right? But now, I just get Netflix, and it costs me, I don't know how much Netflix costs now, let's say $10 a month, and I get to see that without advertisement. So this used to be the way the brands used to communicate with us, and that that is no longer available to them. Now, there is also the problem of brand stagnation. They, many brands have the attitude of, if it isn't broken, why fix it? Okay, but guess what? The, the, the whole commerce environment continues changing every day. So imagine Kodak. Kodak says, oh, we're making tons of money uh, selling films, photo, photo films. Why are we going to change into the digital cam camera? And guess what? Kodak is not a remarkable product anymore. It's a, it's a brand that has practically died. And who remembers uh, Blackberry? You know, the people were addicted to this Blackberry and came uh, uh, Apple, Apple phones or whatever, the iPhone, and just overrun Blackberries. No one uses a Blackberry anymore. Or maybe some people do. I don't know, start here. But you know the, the the brands you have are are the Apple phones and the and the Android phones. That's what people are consuming in regards to uh, phone technology. And who remembers Blockbuster? Blockbuster was the giant in the movie industry. People used to go. I used to go after work and go to the Blockbuster store and rent a movie. But then came Netflix and Blockbuster had the chance, the opportunity to either change their modus operandi or to buy Netflix. And they say, no, we are making tons of money out of people's late fees. And if it's not broken, why fix it? Well, now they are no longer working anymore. And then Sears, Sears was revolutionary at one time, like 50 years ago, when they used to send these catalogs to people and people used to order things through the mail. But now people use Amazon and Timu or, or Shein or all these other things that people can just order the products or service through an app and it's just at the doorstep just two days later. So all that to say is that technology is um, constantly shifting, is advancing and brands who don't keep up with the new technology, they are going to be left behind. And the final reason is that there seems to be a backlash against the work culture. Okay, so for some reason, certain brands decided to become woke, decided to promote uh, transgender events, decided to vote on the side of men who wants to go into a woman's bathroom, decided to, anyway, so there is a big backlash uh, against that. Most people in North America are conservative and when you see a brand, let's say like Bud Light, trying to promote transgenders, you know, we just feel like a bitter taste in our mouth and we say, oh, yeah, we're not going to support this brand. When we see Target, uh, you know, promoting all kind of uh, uh, transgender para para paraphernalia in the stores, we may say, yeah, we are not into that. And, you know, there are so many cultural wars uh, going on right now and I think corporations shouldn't be trying to promote this. This is not the, the, the space for corporations. So, uh, what is it? Uh, there is the issue of uh, men 
uh, trying to compete in girls uh, sports that's totally unfair and some companies are promoting that uh, there is the uh, pronoun issue just because a person tells me that I have to call her a she when it's actually a dude you know I, I just don't feel like it and yes I may humor some of them but I don't want to feel obliged I mean if this person have mental health problems that's their problem it shouldn't be my problem so the and then there is the issue of DEI diversity equity and inclusion okay so this is and this is a uh, uh, giving uh, jobs that should be based on meritocracy to people based on their race, the gender, on how they identify themselves. So overall, there is a backlash against all that. People just prefer normal as opposed to the new trend of, uh, of culture. And you know, who knows what is going to be tomorrow, but the majority of people just like normal stuff, normal everyday, Man is a man, a woman is a woman, and you get a uh, higher on, on on merit, not on race. So this is a big backlash, and a lot of brands are suffering for taking part in this culture war. So to conclude, brands have to continuously reinvent themselves. A good example of a brand that has reinvented themselves is Microsoft. Microsoft under the leadership of Steve Ballmer uh, they were losing market share, they were stagnant, people uh, were considering, considering investing in Microsoft as dead money but then came Satya Nadella and he has revitalized Microsoft. Now Microsoft is one of the most valuable companies in the Standard Poor's 500, it's one of the top uh, seven companies that you know whatever happens in Microsoft influence the whole stock market so this is a good example of how brands they adapt themselves and to continue adapting they have to be churned in the leadership they have to get rid of the old guy who just uh, is stuck in the past doing advertising to glossy magazines and, uh, and to cable network news and just adapt this new marketing technology uh, and you know this is how we see companies flourishing in the 21st century the bottom line is that the market continue evolving and the company that survives are the ones who evolve with the time that's it for today thank you so much for watching and until soon peace